Hello, everyone. We're about to get started on the next session. Uh, I told our next speaker that uh, this was a light gathering of 50 people, uh, which is why she agreed to come and speak today. She was a little bit miffed when she came in earlier and saw the packed room. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Christine Smith, Director of Marketing for Hyundai Canada. Um, it's with great pleasure that I have the opportunity to introduce her and, and to have worked with her over the last few years. Uh, Christine Smith is a no, she's not new to marketing in Canada. She's chair of the brand council on the CMA. Uh, she has 20 years of marketing experience. Um, she's been with Hyundai in this role for two years and in this time, which is, as you know, the last two years have been very different given something that happened two years ago. Uh, she's had a challenge to really sort of focus more on brand in the automotive industry where they've been faced with things like lockdowns and challenges during the pandemic, inventory challenges afterwards. She sat back and said, let's focus on brand and let's try to reposition and grow that Hyundai brand. And for any of you who've seen the advertising or maybe get ads on your phone from Hyundai that are really interesting and creative, Christine's really the arbiter of that. She really creates that stuff. And so it's, it's with my pleasure to introduce her today um, and, and talk about that journey that she's been going under uh, that we've been lucky enough to be a part of. So with that, uh, here's Christine to take you through the next session. Thank you. As Vito said, I'm Christine Smith. I'm the Director of Marketing at Hyundai Canada. That means I lead all marketing, CRM, PR activities for the Hyundai brand across Canada. I've been a Hyundai for a little over two years, but with the brand for six and a half because I led their agency team before I moved over to the brand. Um, I have told my boss I'm never going back though. So. Um, I'm thrilled to be here today. It's so great. I've been to a bunch of in-person events over the last couple of weeks, and I have to say every time I go back, I get really excited. It's so great to be back in person, learning from each other, spending time with one another, networking, running into old friends and ex-coworkers. Um, I will say this room, as Vito mentioned, is a little bigger than I think I was told, um, but that's okay. Uh, Vito, Allison, next time you uh, give me an expectation for results, I'll just expect it to be two to three times bigger. Uh, it's only fair after all. So my time with Hyundai, uh, you know, and I count all six and a half years uh, in that time has been quite the ride, pardon the pun. The brand has gone, undergone a complete transformation. Uh, if you look at our lineup back in 2017, uh, it is completely different now. Uh, there's been a complete redesign of every one of our cars. Uh, the expansion into key SUV segments has been uh, a real game changer for us. And the electrification of many of our nameplates and launch of dedicated EV vehicles, the brand has never looked better or frankly been more in demand. We had over 20 million visitors to our site last year, which was a new record for the brand in Canada and we're pacing to do even better this year. Uh, a bit of a challenge when you have supply chain. Uh, sorry, I forgot to change the slide. I'm already failing. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's been exciting. And, and one of the biggest struggles I have had in the past two years since moving over to Hyundai has been the supply chain and logistics challenges. Uh, we've had more customers than cars for two to three years now. And, you know, as a marketer, you're like, it's kind of a nice deal. Um, you know, no one's coming into my office and going, Christine, we're 10 short on the daily sales number. What are we going to do? How are we going to turn up the machine? Um, you know, they're, they're over wondering why the boat's not unloaded in Vancouver yet in the sales guy's office. So, you know, it really has given us an opportunity to kind of think differently. I'm going to rewind, though, to 2017 when I first joined the brand. I have worked in automotive before in my career, but I also spent a lot of time in uh, consumer packaged goods. And in fact, I started out in this industry in the direct mail, CRM, and digital side of things. So I tend to look at things a little differently than your more traditional marketer. Um, and, and so I came into Hyundai, I sat in a lot of research meetings and they put up on the wall how people felt about us and, uh, and, and you know, always what rose to the top was value. And 
everyone looked at us, uh, we offered great value, we offered great deals, probably not the best kind of value. Um, and yet when I looked at our marketing plans, we were spending the vast majority of our time doing what we call in automotive retail marketing. So your sales events, probably a little humorous advertising, talking about how, how we achieve such great pricing. So people would say to me, Christine, what do you think? You're new, you know, what's, what's your fresh eyes point of view? And, and my answer was always the same. I wondered why we were spending all of our time, money and resources telling people what they already knew. And there was an opportunity to take a step back and really think about how we went to market differently. Our product lineup was gonna be uh, revolutionized over the following couple of years. So we had a number of new product launches that were gonna give us a unique opportunity to really go to market differently. Um, and, and, and so when we thought about how we could, uh, how we could do this, we took, we, sorry, um, we took a bit of a step back because there was also a lot of waste in our approach. I mean, we were talking about value and sales events to everyone, right? We were on TV, we were in print, we were in digital, everyone was getting the same message. And when we looked at the data, the truth was only a small proportion of the market actually solely was interested in the deal. At any given time, about a third of Canadians are in market for a car. So we're telling everyone to buy now because we've got this great deal, automatically two thirds of our spend, it's kind of just going in the bin. Then we're also, again, only talking about our deals. So those people who are only uh, shopping for the deal, we're hitting them, but there's this other big large group of car shoppers that need more and we were ignoring them as well. And so again, just kind of throw that money away. So we knew that there was a big opportunity. Um, but it wasn't gonna be easy. Uh, you know, people's kind of brand beliefs and biases are, are deep rooted. Hyundai's been in Canada for 40 years. At the time it had been 35 years. You know, their, their, their beliefs about us were pretty ingrained. And they associated with value. And as I said, not ki the kind of value that's, that's good. By value, I kind of mean cheap. So, not really where you wanna be if you wanna to start to grow and, and build volume and, and grow into new categories. Um, and we were, again, just immediately limiting ourselves. We needed to reinvent ourselves. We needed to change the hearts and minds of Canadians when it came to Hyundai. We needed to be more modern, more innovative, more advanced. We wanted to be a brand and a product that they can count on, one of good quality, one that's reliable, durable, and safe you know, something of value versus something that's just a good price. We knew that it was, a, it was possible because when we talked to our customers, the way they talked about their Hyundai vehicles was fascinating. They'd say, it's such a great car, I love it. Then they'd kind of add on, but I got a really good deal. So they felt this need to kind of justify how they had ended up in this car that they actually really loved. And so our challenge was how do we really dive into that, that love for the brand and get other people to consider Hyundai in a new way. So luckily, as I said, we had a number of new products coming out and impressive ones at that. Uh, in 2018, we launched the Kona that, that shot to number one in a, the highest, most competitive segment in Canada, basically from launch. So we could take advantage of those launches to really start to build a different track record, a different messaging hierarchy and a different targeting approach for the Hyundai brand. Now, as, as Vito mentioned, uh, we've had an interesting kind of couple of years in the car business from a supply chain standpoint, and I've been a little spoiled uh, in that uh, the more customers than cars scenario has meant that while our demand is really strong, uh, we have a strong order bank, people are waiting for Hyundai, their Hyundais to arrive, it's meant we could also focus a little bit more on our brand and a little bit less on that day-to-day -day demand driving. And so we, we haven't let that good crisis go to waste, if you will. So we needed to think differently about our approach, as I said. You know, automotive is a business ripe with tradition and, and especially in our approach and how we go to market. Um, there's a lot of habit and, and kind of existing behaviors, tier one, two, three, 1.5. Um, and there's a huge reliance on price incentives, or at least there had been. And, and to a degree that persists today, although we're in this bit of a, 
a, a strange business climate, which you know could change any day. Um, so spending the majority of our resources on retail advertising, promoting events and monthly payments, really all we were doing was reinforcing that value um, that we were getting for free. And anyone who wasn't already shopping us, frankly, we weren't bringing to the brand. Uh, so we really needed to, to focus on that. So how we looked at that, as I said, we, we really focused on um, looking at the right time, the right place, and the right message for customers. Um, whether it was Upper Funnel, where we're reaching all Canadians through mass reaching channels, um, and there we would focus on a product message or an overall brand message. Whether it's targeting shoppers who maybe aren't shopping Hyundai yet, but they're shopping our competitors, where we can reach out and say, hey, have you considered this specific model? Here's all the features and benefits that make it great. You should consider it. And to, down to those who are already intending towards Hyundai. And, uh, we can then serve up a message around our retail event, our pricing, our tar um, and target them with a more buy now type of message. Um, and, and so as we looked at that, um, we leveraged data and insights to target those groups, but also figure out what are the right messages and content for those messages to serve up. So we use the AI data to help us. We leveraged and combined PRISM segments to build targetable groups for each of our vehicles. And using the data, we were able to learn a little bit more about those groups and what was important to them. The type of vehicle they were looking for, what features or attributes might be important to them. Um, and not only did this help inform our targeting, both in uh, CRM and direct mail and, dig and email, but also in our digital advertising, um, but it also showed up in how the creative was developed and our messaging, which then even extends to our television advertising. And, and, and you know, we did that by really taking the prism segments and starting to combine them um, into larger segments that we could identify common interests, common lifestyles, common needs from a vehicle and start to build messages out for them. And this evolved to targeting approach informed our overall comm strategy. And really we focus on um, each phase of the funnel and building the right type of messages for where they are. And this is something I talked to, you know, we have 225 dealers across the country. They'd love I, for me just to show the highest volume models, the monthly payment and go from there. And so I spend a lot of time talking about this, this strategy with them. Um, because it's important for them to understand that what they see on TV is really playing a different role uh, than maybe what comes up in digital to a targeted consumer. And they may not always see that because they're not the target. So when we think about our upper funnel, the task here is really all about building the brand. So this is where I'm gonna lead with some of my flagship models, some of my opinion changing models like my EVs and my Ionics, um, and really start to position Hyundai differently. And then as we get into mid-funnel, this is those competitive shoppers I talked about. And this is where we're gonna focus on our volume vehicles because mid and low funnel is where we drive that demand machine that sustains our sales pace every day. But we're really going to focus here on convincing people not shopping us to convince us. And again, our price is not their way to do that. We focus on the vehicles, on the features, on the benefits that are important to those customers. Again, using that segmentation data to help inform those choices. And then finally, low funnel, traditionally known as retail, or tier two and three. And here's where we're closing the sale. You know, this is where we're gonna use the monthly payment, the sales event, to basically say, we know you're interested, now is the time. And again, that ad is going to be customized to them based on what we know from our data. It's going to show the vehicle they want, maybe even the color they were looking at. It's gonna show the type of monthly payment, maybe it's a lease or a finance or a cash sale, the type of uh, pricing information they want. And it's really gonna encourage them, now's the time to go in store and buy. So, you know, we can drive a machine that really changes opinion, but also drives that daily demand every day. The, what we have really helped what this has really helped us do, rather, is really get, again, as I said, that right message to that right consumer. I'm going back to those CRM days when I started out kind of uh, uh, way back when in this industry. 
at the right time. Ultimately, this has been a game changer in increasing the efficiency of our plan and the efficacy of our messaging uh, against all of our KPIs. And when we talk about that, we know it's working. We keep track of our data, our key demand KPIs on a daily basis. And we've identified over the years what are the key kind of performance indicators that connect to sales and what's the ratio with which they connect to sales. And so we can watch these numbers and we know how we're pacing against our sales target. Um, again, it's been a bit of a wild ride over the last couple of years because the ratios are a little wonky, but, um, but we, we keep track of it regularly, so we're always informing it with the latest information. And what we've seen is across those three KPIs, website traffic, search interest, and online conversions, we're just continuing to grow and grow. It's funny, when we first uh, redesigned this plan back in 2017, um, I was at a notion at the time working with our media director and uh, we knew that this was the right thing to do, and we knew we were gonna see year-over-year -year growth. Um, and uh, every year since then, we've kind of said, is this gonna be the year? Is this gonna be the year where we have to fight a little harder to get those year-over-year -year improvements because the changes maybe are a little bit smaller, a little bit um, more uh, minuscule in terms of driving impactful change? But as we've seen, um, that hasn't been the case. We've been able to uh, build that sustained growth, and that's because of the combination of everything we've been doing. It's not just about the demand machine. It's also about the brand funnel, because if we're driving more people in to the demand machine, we're going to drive year-over-year -year improvement regardless of um, whether the machine has been tuned uh, kind of as far as it goes. But as technology changes, as more and more options come out in the media landscape, we always have more tools in our toolbox and, and more opportunities to uh, try new things, especially again, I talk about the business climate and automotive the last few years, it's given us some runway to try some new things and, and test out some channels like connected TV or new digital channels or new platforms that um, maybe if we were in a more uh, high pressure sales environment would be a little tougher to justify. And so we've been using this opportunity um, to really lean into that so we know when the business, you know, uh, there's only two worlds we live in as marketers, right? More customers than products or more products than customers. There's not really a third option. And, and eventually the pendulum will swing and we'll go back to more, more cars than customers, but we'll have learned a lot and we'll have designed a, a system for our marketing, leveraging our data and our insights and our targeting that we know what adjustments we need to make to react to that market. And, and you know, when I talked about this, the X's, you know, when we talk about the proportion across the plan, we adjust that based on what's happening in the business, right? So it might be 50 plus percent in the upper funnel sometimes. It's been almost 60% for the last couple of years. Um, but then in other times, we may see low funnel uh, take up a little bit more. We're never going to go to zero on any of these. We're not turning anything off. Um, but uh, we do adjust real time between them. Oops, wrong button. Okay. Um, so we're gonna continue. You know, when we think about what's next, we wanna continue, we wanna continue to innovate, we wanna try new things, we wanna gain more and more insights from the data so we can just continue to make the system smarter, more relevant, and more targeted to our customers. And, and, and eventually moving towards um, that word we all hear more and more hyper-personalization, starting to build the systems that are gonna allow us to get to that place because there's still opportunity here, there's still more we can do, and that's ultimately what we're working towards. Thank you. Any questions?